Hello everyone, welcome back to Football Aranya, your home of Dutch football in English language. I'm Michael Statham and I'm joined by Mike Bell, the Netherlands expert and also the founder of Football Aranya. The Netherlands games are back after so long. There's a couple of friendlies coming up, Denmark and Germany. Denmark's is Saturday, Germany's on Tuesday. Both at home, two very tough opponents. So we'll be previewing those games. We'll be talking about Van Hal's squad selection, his choice of tactics, who will be starting the game. And also, Ronald Koeman could be back to become the manager after the World Cup, ready for 2023. So much discussed, Mike. Firstly, what were your thoughts on the squad selection that Van Hal made? He's obviously got an eye on the World Cup. Um, a couple of, well, not strange decisions, but a couple of surprises were that Jordan Teza is in, the PS3 defender, and also Jordi Classy is finally back, uh, the midfielder for RZ. Choices which I think split the crowd a little bit, especially Classy. But is this an eye into what Van Gaal is going to be trying to prepare ready for the autumn slash winter World Cup? Yeah, I think that he brought in a big squad for this game. And there's a couple of players that are injured. You know, De Vrij is not there. That's why Tez is in there. And I think if Botman didn't get injured against Chelsea um, in the Champions League, maybe he would have been there for Tezzy. But I think Tezzy's had a good season for PSV. So I don't disagree so much with that one. I think he's he deserved the call-up. Um, if you're somebody like Patrick Stroik at uh, Weeds, I know he's not had a good season, but you know, uh, if he's on the fence about choosing the Netherlands or Belgium, I think that he'd be steering himself towards Belgium at the moment if he's that far down yeah. the, the pecking order with Tezzy getting picked up instead. But, you know, let's we'll see what Tezzy does. I'm, I think he's a good option. I think Van Aal likes players that can be versatile and Tezzy, he's, he's centre-back this season for PSV, but he can also play on the right of defence as well. Um, and, you know, Van Gaal likes that players that can can switch different positions. He's got that with Timber, he's got that with Tezzy. And, you know, he, he'll be trying out different tactics in the, the coming games. With, with Classy, to me, he's been, he's been good this season, but has he been Netherlands quality? I wouldn't have said yes. Um, I think that Van Al obviously knows him from the past, having him in the, the national team and obviously trusts him and thinks that he's going to be good for this group. So you've got to trust him in that sense. But if you're going on on form, I don't know if Jordi Classy's form has propelled him into this this slot, especially when everyone's have so many other defensive midfield options. And you look at somebody like, I know he's not everyone's cup of tea, but Pablo Rosario is having a great season with, with Nice, who are, you know, in a Champions League spot in France. And then you've got players like Tony Belhena, who've been in the squad constantly um, or in the pre-selection constantly. And then he's got a move to Espanyol. He seems to be doing all right in Spain. And then he doesn't get picked and, and Jordi Classy does. And, and my bug, bugbear is the fact that I know everyone keeps saying to me that he's only been at PSV for a little while, but even Joey Veerman's not getting called up, even though he, I think that he's been been great for PSV since he's there. He had another great game today. Um, got... Man a match on on sofa score. I know you don't have to always read into these, you know, who scored or sofa scores ratings, and um, not always that accurate. But you know, Beerman again, man a match today for PSV. According to them, he's creative. He adds something more to the midfield, and I think he would add something that everyone's miss in a sense of creativity that Jordi Class is not going to bring. Um, and I think if you got Frankie De Jong, Coop Miners in there, you got Martin Darin. Why do you need another defensive midfielder in there? Especially if he's going to go for a tactic that I think he's going to go with, um, which I think is 5-3-2. So I don't know why you need other defensive midfield options in there. But, mm. you know, Van Gaal's done well so far as an everyone's boss. You've got to trust that he knows what he's doing. Um, overall, I think the selection sort of picked itself, especially in the attacking areas. I don't think there's anyone that really has been knocking on the door in any of the wing or striker positions to really get called up so I think that that was all predictable but Jordan Tezzi I think deserves some recognition I'm excited to see what he does um, Classy over Veerman, even Gravenberg or Belhena or Rosario I think it's a strange one but let's see what he does in the upcoming period whether he actually gets on the pitch against Denmark or Germany it remains to be seen mm, but yeah. yeah yeah, it might just be him or just Van Howard just wants to take a look at him um, if I actually give him any game time so we'll see but you know I don't think this is the, the perfect squad yet Okay well I thought that Class's 
inclusion in the squad was an interesting one. It, I don't think he'll get minutes, like you said, but isn't it, isn't it more to do with the position that Classy plays compared to a Joey Veerman? I like Veerman, but he's, a, he's an attacking midfielder, he's a left winger, possibly an eight, but he's not uh, a sitting midfielder like Classy. Does that mean that Van Gaal is going to play five at the back? Is it going to be more of a four at the back and maybe a midfielder sitting in between them? And then the role of Frank Dion might change for these big games. Maybe that's why he's called up this extra defensive midfielder so that he can play a defensive midfielder um, between between the defenders and then have De Jong sort of further forward, if you know what I'm saying. And that's why maybe Vim wasn't called up. That's why maybe Classy is called up as an extra one. You've got Classy, Deron, who can play as a sitting midfielder, then De Jong further up, Cote Miners possibly further up, or the same thing as a defensive midfielder. Just my thoughts, but might give us an insight into what Van Gaal might be trying to do. Reminds me a little bit of what the test might be doing when they've got Richardly Bazur as a centre back, but also he offers more on the ball coming forward. I, th- I think that's what Van Hal needs to do. He'll either need to switch to a five at the back or a four with a sitting defence midfielder to maybe experiment how he can beat the likes of Denmark and Germany. Two tough teams. Denmark, of course, get into the semis of the Euros. Um, and Germany, even though they had a bit of a flop a couple of years, they've, they're still a very strong side. So I can see why he's picked these up, these these teams, this opposition to test that kind of kind of game. What, what do you think about the formation? Because Van Gaal did say he was going to be experimenting with a new style. New, new in what sense? New as in since Van Gaal's taken charge or going back to this five at the back, which De Boer played, was criticised for. Then in the end, actually was kind of praised for because it kind of lived up to the strengths that they had at the time. What do you think? Yeah, I, he hasn't actually confirmed what he's going to do yet. I mean, he's some sort of cryptic words in his interview about how he's doing a tactic that other teams are doing around Europe. Um, you know, when you talk about him and, and changing the tactic, you essentially think it's going to be five at the back because that's what he did at the last World Cup. And that's what he has always been saying since he's become Netherlands boss, that he hasn't had time to work on a, a tactic that he wants the Netherlands team to play. Um and for me, that would point it towards five at the back. But as you say, five at the back does have options. You know, you can put, like Vitesse do, a, a certain midfielder in there to sort of play that that role. You know, somebody like Frankie De Jong could, could do that. Or De Jong could play further forward. Until we actually see what Van Hal picks against Denmark, I don't think anyone's going to get told either. I don't think he's going to come to, say, the press conference on Monday or or Friday and say, right, I'm playing five at the back. I think he's going to keep it a bit of a secret. And it's only going to be when the actual game kicks off that we will know the exact tactic that, that he wants to play. I mean, he might shock us all, but I, I'd be surprised if it's not 5-3-2 that he lines up with. But I think that's interesting, in fact, that who he picks at the back, does he go with in a central defensive partnership? You'd think it would be Van Dyke, De Ligt, and then one other. Does he, yeah, you like how he's in the back, don't you? Yeah, I would, I would say Timber is having an excellent season. I love what he does at Ajax, and I think that he should slot in there. But I know a lot of people would would like to to see somebody else. And you know, you think that maybe does he shoehorn Blind in there? I hope he doesn't. But you know, it's somebody that can can move into this sort of defensive midfield role. Somebody like Blind who is good on the ball. Um, let's see if he does that. But yeah, you know, trying to second guess Louis Van Gaal is is pretty hard at times, and you never know what he's going to come out with. Uh, but I think he's going to go five three two. But I wait to see who he then picks for the midfield, and then who he picks up front. You go with Memphis, and then who who's the second attacker? I mean, well, surely Juma it's got to be, really good, doesn't he? Yeah, it's got to be Dan Juma through the middle. But has he ever played that sort of five three two central role before? Maybe he has. At uh, Bournemouth, I don't know if I've seen him doing that, but. I think that could really work well for him. If, he, if Dan Juma is given a sort of free role to do what he wants, I think he could he could be the key attacker for Netherlands at the moment going into World Cup because I can't think of another Netherlands attacker except for maybe Gakpo who comes into this international period injured and might not even play. Yeah. Who I can see causing danger to other sides. You no, know, Memphis isn't in form. He's not playing for Barcelona. Malin is benched by... Dortmund, their course has got off to a good start with Burnley. I mean, he seems to be impressing the pundits in England, but you know Burnley are still losing. They're still 
down the bottom. He's only scored once, I think. So, yeah, there's not very many attackers at the moment you, you really pin your hopes on if you're a Netherlands fan, um, especially yeah, Noah Lang as well. No, and Noah Lang's been benched at Club Bruges as well. You know, we talked about last season, he was the the star of the Belgian league and he was getting rumoured to, to move to the biggest clubs in England. And now Alfred Schroeder has come in at Club Brugge and he doesn't seem to fancy him and he's now on the bench. He only came on for like the last 10, 15 minutes of the, the game today. So it's not looking good for, for set attackers. Um, but Dan Juma seems to be the one that is in great form. And I, I'm excited to see him play and you know this is why you watch Netherlands you want to see the the players that you want to see play and right now the only one I can say that really really excite me going forward is is Dan Juma. I really enjoy watching um Hapo play recently. You're right, I don't think he will play in these games. At least not the first one. He 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 went down really awkwardly didn't he? Yeah. Um, was I'm a surprised he's not a, yeah, yeah I'm surprised it's not a long term injury but to be fair. Um I'd like to see Hapo though he, he probably end up being in a, in a wide role. I, maybe with this five it might be a five-two-three, with with a couple of wide players supporting Memphis, and then that that allows those players playing those roles that they're they're further better at. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I can't guess Louis Van Gaal's. So let, let's let's perhaps not try. But I want to get your thoughts on Jurgen Timber. I I've loved watching him develop lately, and Van Gaal really enjoyed playing him in the Euros. So he obviously thinks he's got a great player in his hands, and nearly a year later. The guy is still standing out for the right reasons until in this recent Ajax run where defensively they're not they're not as solid as they as they were. They were had a frightening defence where you could count the amount of goals that they conceded on one hand and we were halfway through the season. Now they've conceded oh, I don't have the exact stat, but everyone knows it they like such football how poor Ajax has been defensively since then. And Timber has been at centre back for most of those games. He was beaten to a header against Benfica. Is that his fault? I know I did come rushing out of his goal. It wasn't great goalkeeping. But Timber, it just strikes me that w- will he always be a dependable centre-back in a top-five league where you can rely on his height? He's physically strong and a brilliant defender on the ground. But am I, am I going too far by saying that maybe in the air he's, he's going to find it tricky? When you've got De Ligt and De Van Dijk ahead of you, it's hard to get on the team, unless he's part of a back five. Yeah, I think that for me, if Van Gaal sticks to four at the back, I wouldn't play Timber. But if it's five, I would. Because right. you've got Van Dijk and you've got Delict in there who have the height and have that physical presence in the box. And then you have a centre-back who's great with a ball at his feet and more technical. So well, I think Timber that right If you're playing five at the back, I would say no. no. I, I know some people say that Timber Duck can bring some attacking force. But if you've got Dumfries and you saw what he did at the Euros, and even I'm really what I'm really disappointed about this international period is that Frimpong got injured. So I'd yeah. love to have seen yeah. him getting some game time. I think he's had an absolute outstanding season for Leverkusen and going forward I think he can be a real threat for Netherlands. And sadly we're gonna miss out on that because he's he's out for the rest of the season. We've got Hans Hatterbor instead who I think we're all still waiting to have a good game in the Netherlands because we've not seen it yet. Um, but putting Timber there instead of Dumfries, I think, would would hinder you going forward a little bit. Not at the back. I think at the back you'd be more solid, but going yeah. forward, yeah. I think Dumfries is still the best option. And he's playing he's playing well for it. I think he's gone to enter. A lot of people have said he might not be able to handle that level. But I think he has. Um, and he scored. I think he scored this weekend as well. So you can't take that out, especially with the question marks of a left back. You know, if he sticks with Daily Blind there, you need to have something on the right that would be able to, to bomb up and down that wing. And that would be be Dumfries. Yeah, I agree. I would be good to get your thoughts on who is starting eleven will be Mike. Maybe have a quick think about it whilst just to do a bit of housekeeping. Um do you want to bring up a comment first from John? Saying always good analysis. Just about time to bring up the wristbands. Yes, of course. If you're new to football, Daniel, we did have a wristbands for the Euros competition. It's still time to bring out something for the World Cup. I had to have a think about it. Mugs, anyone? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I don't really fancy having lots of mugs in my house because the wristbands were clogging up my room for a little while <laughs> until some of them went. <laughs> but it, just to say as well, if you're listening to this 
on, on a certain platform. This is available on YouTube, SoundCloud and iTunes. So if you're watching or listening on one, you know that you've always got the option of the other. And if you do enjoy this, make sure you give it a like and subscribe wherever you are as well. You can, I'm sure you can do that whilst you're listening. And don't forget to get involved. Comment below on who you would like your starting 11 to be ready for this Denmark game. Do you want to keep it at the strongest 11 or do you want to see some, some changes, some new players come in? You're right, Mike, that a few of the players, it's come at the wrong time for them, injury-wise, Frimpong, Hapo. So what would your starting 11 be, give, given that Denmark are a strong team? But you want to experiment, don't you, before, before this World Cup happens? Because we can't guess what Van Gaal would do, I want to know what you would do. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily go five at the back for this game. But I feel like I should pick the 11 in case he goes five at the back. And that, I think the weakest place we've got now is Bio's out, Sillison's out, Stekelenberg's out, Pascal's out. So we're going to have to have a goalkeeper that's not got much experience. I don't think he's going to go Tim Krul. I think he might go with, with Flecken in goal. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you might start with, with him. It'll be him or Crew. If Joel Dromo starts for Netherlands after the seasons he's had, then there's hope for all of us, to be fair. Uh, I, I um, think he might, you know. I've got to give Dromo some credit. Don't you think he's been a little bit better lately? He's had a, he's had a, he had a poor season until lately. He's been a bit better, a bit more solid. Lately, as in the past week. As in, in the past week. <laughs> the, the win over Copenhagen and then the win today, he's kept two clean sheets. But if you go back to the 4-4 against Copenhagen, he was, he was dreadful. That's only two weeks ago. So, yeah. He's a good shot stopper, but you know he's always got an error in him. And yeah. the pressure of starting for Netherlands, do you, do you think that drama would handle that well? It's a friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Still, but, you know, he's got to have to try and impress Van Gaal because he's not going to be number one. And, yeah, I think that he would struggle. Whereas... Krill would be the obvious choice because of Vic's experience, but I think that... But we don't want to see Krill play, choice. do we? I don't think. No, I don't think anyone does, but... No. I think that well, let's because, give him a chance. Uh, as a, you know, I'm a Newcastle fan. You know, I love Tim Krill when he played for us, but... No. Not anymore. Um, I mean, I'm at Flecken. I think because... Because Van Hal made such a... a big deal of the fact that he came out and said that he'd spotted Flecken and he made a big deal that nobody else had heard of him and that he was, was his choice. And um, I think that he will be the one that starts. But we'll see if he if he makes a clanger against Denmark, then we'll see what he does for, for Germany. But yeah, the goalkeeping situation right now is is a worrying one and you hope that they have Bailo and Sillison back in time for... The, the World Cup and then you know past year I think that if, if he didn't get injured he would have might have been in here. I think he has good games for the Ajax. He has some some bad ones but I think unless you're Justin Bio, you know everyone's goalkeeper situations a bit scary. Yeah that, that injury will do no harm because Bilo will be straight back into that number one position when the next games come around. Yeah. So then if we're going five at the back, I'll go Van Dijk, Delict Timber. A left back. I don't want to see Blinder, so I'm going to put Vine down there. And a right back, I'm going to put Dumfries. Yeah, I think it's about time to get Vine down another chance, don't you? Yeah, I think that you know, I like Marcia. Mm. And I think that him and, and Vine are the future. You know, I think we all know that Blind's going to play some role because Van Hal likes him. Um, and he seems to want him to be to be the left back, but you know he's got to experiment in these games and give Vindal another go. You know, Vindal self-proclaimed best left back in the, the area of his <laughs> It's time for him to to step up to the the national team as well. And then from midfield, Frankie De Jong is the obvious one. I'm hoping that Van Hal is going to give Coop Miners more of a role in this international period. I think he's playing he well for that. He and he never does. But I don't know if you saw the interview where he was asking, he was answering questions from fans and he was asked what player he compared himself most to in the Netherlands squad. And he said that he was most like Coop Miners. So maybe he's now got a soft spot for him and he's going to shoehorn him in there 
to the the midfield. Don't get me wrong. If he's been yeah, playing he's in Italy good. as well, he, he's he's grown into this kind of role playing playing with two, with a couple of midfielders. He's one of them, and he's got back five behind him, and he's so dynamic with his passing. Like it just suits him. I, I'm gutted to be yeah. able to see him more of Coke Miners. Yeah, I think that he's a he's a star of the future, and he's one that should be be in there. And then the third midfield position is one that I find very difficult because. In my head, I, I'm going to put Vinaldo in my class in there, but I don't think even him deserve to start for the Netherlands no. at the moment. And the one that probably does hasn't been in form <laughs> recently. So you'd say that you know putting Stephen Berghaus there would have been what most fans have been asking for a couple of months ago, but recently he's not really impressed. And I think he got hauled off against Feyenoord today. Um, and I think he had a, a very, very poor first half. So I'd like to see him given a chance in an attacking midfielder role um, instead of on the wing. And if he's going to go 5 3 2, how do you slot Berghaus in there without playing him as an attacking midfielder? So let's put Berghaus there and then up front. Memphis, because he's Memphis and he's got to start for Netherlands, and then Dan Jim next time. Mm. It's, it's like we've got a lot of players who are doing well in the, in the, the centre of the park, but out in the wider areas, full-backs and wingers, it's, it's hard, to, hard to make those decisions. And that changes how you play, whether it's a four, whether it's a five, with wingers or with attacking midfielders, two strikers, whatever it is. So lots of things for Van Hal to think about, lots of decisions to make. I, that was actually a question from someone on Twitter. And another question from someone on Twitter was about uh, who is Van Hal missing from this selection? Is there anyone that you think really should have been in this final selection? I know you mentioned a couple of players who are injured and didn't make it. I'm guessing Frimpong would have been one of them. Would there have been anyone else you'd like to have seen? I mentioned about it, and obviously I'm a big fan of, of Joey Beerman, but I can also agree with the same people who say that it might be a bit too early for him. You know, I think that he is the, a future in everyone's player. He's definitely going to be in there. Um, whether it's just a bit too soon remains to be seen. In terms of, of other players, it's, it, it really is difficult because... Unless you look at the French League and go with somebody like Pablo Rosario, there isn't that many out there that are playing well for their clubs to really justify it. You know, Van der Beek isn't playing well for Everton. And, you know, when you put an Everton squad and he's missing, everyone's always like, where's Van der Beek? But he's not playing well. Right? He's not. He's injured. I think he's injured anyway. But when he does play for Everton, he's not exactly standing out. And they're in the relegation zone. El Ghazi's fallen off. The radar since he moved to Everton. He's, I don't think he's actually played a game for them since. Um, and then, you know, Justin Clivert's injured. None of the, you know, the Bordeaux, the Stangs have been playing well. There's one, there's a couple that, you know, got mentioned in Italy that a couple of years ago, but they're not playing very well. So I think that other than that, you know, other than the squad that's been picked, there's not really anyone that, for me, stands out that is missing from the squad. I think Gravenberg. I can totally understand why Van Hal's done it. I can understand why you'd say to him, look, you've not been playing well this season. The under 21s have got two huge games coming up. Mm. Go play with them, impress with them, and then you'll come back into the fold. Yeah. But, you know, if you look at the under 21 squad, you wouldn't really say any of those deserve to be in the, the first team. You know, Xerxes not exactly... He's doing well for Anderlecht, but he's not knocking on the door of the first team. You know, Bobby's only back from a, a long-term injury. For me, I think Van Hal's got his squad pretty right, except for I'd like to see Joy Veerman in there. I think if Gakpo has to pull out, I'd be interested in see who if Van Hal does pick up anyone. You know, does he does he call up Luke De Jong? Um, does he give Justin Cliver a chance? We'll we'll have to see. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think there's anyone really for me that's missing and glaringly missing, and as if it's an error by by Van Hal. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't think there's anyone big missing either. I think that he's waiting for a few players extra in the area of his to break through or to get a, a big move to a top, te- top team and then to get some more options in future after this World Cup. It's like we already know who the players will be for this World Cup, bar one or two may- maybe that will make it that didn't make it this time. Um, and, and a comment has actually come in about Klavenberg. I think Van Gaal could easily have picked him, by the way. I think he could have easily just shoehorned him in but not played him. But he had to send yeah. a message out to him. 
Um, Johnson from Hamburg has been Jot Zerton's 21s. His form has actually improved over the last few matches for Ajax. In a way, yes, it has, but it it because of his form before that, I don't think you can justify him being in for, for, for this squad. And do you much like how I said about Drummel <laughs> over the last week being quite good, but not overall, therefore deserving of um, the starting goalkeeping spot. Hamburg's going to manage this over the rest of this season into next season, see if he gets his spot. And he still can if he, if he stays with Ajax next season. He's playing really well for the first half of the season. He, he'll probably even start at the World Cup. But that's that's a long way from now. He's got a lot of hard work to do still. Yeah, he's not going to stay at Ajax, is he? He's, he's, he's away in the summer. No, no, no chance. He's He's gone. He's not signing a new contract. He's got one year left. Ajax can't afford to not sell him this summer. And Bayern Munich won him. So I think that's... It's... It's done. I think he's he's gone. I think then you look at it being the star is going to be another right traded buzzer and go to a league too soon and then not work out for him. But I think that I can't remember the last time the Bayern Munich signed a player from an Eredivisie club for their first team. Off the top of my head, maybe there is one that somebody can can point out, but. Not me. So I think that that is actually a good move for him. I think that they could could nurture him and um, with a the manager that they have. But yeah, it's it's right now. I'd say it's hit and miss whether Ravenberg would succeed there because this season he has been so, in other words, poor. Um, and yes, he has improved in the past couple of games. But you know, the form for most of the season hasn't been good enough. And a lot of Ajax fans wanted him dropped. So. Mm. Yeah, we'll see. I think he is a future in everyone's star if he does pick up his form and maintain a level of form that we expect from him. But we need to see that. You know, he should be he should be leading this Ajax midfield this season. He's been in the first team for the past couple of years. So this is his time to shine. Um and he's not really doing that. Yeah, and then Ajax got their the fans got their way when Havenberg was dropped and they put Clarsen in the side and he played a little better for a couple of games and then played really poor himself. So it's that they're struggling for options there. I really want to talk about Ajax and final with the Classica a little later because there's something else Netherlands related I want to talk to you about first. That Ronald Koeman could be the manager again after the World Cup. He was the manager before. He did really well in revitalising the Netherlands after the, the dark years. And and he, he then left to go to Barcelona to fulfil his dream. Didn't work out for him. And this he could be back. Is it a good thing that he, that he could be back? And... Are the rumours to be believed, Mike? How how true is this? I think it's it's very true. Um, I think that what's come out today is NOS and, and Football International as well are now reporting it too, that the talks are underway. I mean, the talks are they're happening now and Cummins apparently even sorting out his backroom staff because that's how advanced it is. Mm. I think that what we've always criticised the KNVB for is short-sightedness and uh, unwillingness to go outside of what they know. And, you know, before they appointed Van Hal, who I was a, I, I'm a fan of, I like Van Hal. I think that he's done a good job so far. But before they appointed him, there was talk of, oh, will they go foreign? Or will they look outside the Netherlands for a, a boss and you know, at that time I was like no they, they won't because it's, it's the KNVB and they, they always go for the safe option and, and Kimmin is the safe option he wants the job he did a good job last time why wouldn't he go back to him and say look it's yours if you want it Kimmin wants it if they can work out a deal it's going to happen whether it's a good thing after what he's done at Barcelona remains to be seen I think that where the ones are now we owe a lot to Kimmin of what he did when he came in, got him playing right again, got him back to what he should be. And if he had been head coach instead of De Boer, it might have been a bit different at Euro 2020. But, you know, there's not another Barcelona coming, so you can't say that, you know, Kimmin would get poached again. All right, now everyone's under Kimmin. So I'm willing to give him another shot, but I can see why people, after what's happened to Barcelona, would be very hesitant to him being picked. But he knows the players, they're in the squad, the squad liked him, 
you know, you've had Virgil van Dijk coming out in support of his potential rehiring. So yeah, I think that everything points in the direction of Kuman coming back and we just need to hope that it's as successful as it was the first time around. I'm a little hesitant after the Barcelona stuff, but you think, well, the great job he did and some managers can just suit some teams and this could be one of those. I hope that he, he comes back and he, and he continues what hopefully has been a successful World Cup. I don't think the Netherlands fans expect to see them win the World Cup at this point. Of course, when it's a few days before the tournament begins, everyone will be thinking that they're going to win it. But Koeman has to try and take them further onto the, the years after that and, and, and make them one of the favourites, make them great again, I guess. But that, that's all to come. And um, I, I really want to ask you about Ajax 3, Final 2, Mike. It was a fantastic game. One of the best Classicos I can remember in quite some time. Probably since the 6 2 final, it was, it was that good a game. And it brings into some, some things with, with Ajax because of the amount of goals that I can see. They were knocked out of Champions League. That win was big for them. They could have dropped points. PSV could probably even have gone top today. It didn't happen. And um, yeah, what what a game! F- final order back. Final order could be possibly next season one of the, one of the favourites to win the Eredivisie. On if they can keep this team together, this team could take on any team. The the reason why they weren't able to get results today for me was they have this game on Thursday in the Conference League. Did have the energy levels? Bilo's out, so it wasn't enough. Yeah, and I think moments in matches. If you're a Feyenoord fan, you're looking at when Des has had the chance to square it to Tunisia to, to make it 3 1, and he shot wide instead. You know, in another universe, Des has squares the ball to Tunisia, Tunisia puts it in 3 1. Yeah. Then you're looking at Feyenoord's first win in Amsterdam since, since 2005. So, yeah, I think that this Feyenoord side have something about them. I think in slot, they have a great coach. Yeah. And they're building something great. You know, looking at it for the summer as well, you're not like, well, they're going to lose him, him, and then it's all going to fall apart. You know, you know Kochi wasn't there today. You know, he's been probably the best player for the past few weeks. And all the final fans were down saying, oh, no, we're going to go to Amsterdam without Kochi. We're going to get hammered. Um, but they still played well and you know, they've only just lost in the, the last couple of minutes and easily could have won that game. So I think that final fans have to to realise that, yes, they're not going to win the league this season. Yes, they're not going to finish second, so they're not going to get in Champions League. But Slot started something which could be great next season. And in the summer, with Arneson still staying on, you can trust that they're going to make some smart decisions in the, the transfer market. I know that Arneson's had some questionable transfer so far but I think that this long term project for Feyenoord is going to bring them some success and I think next season we are going to have a freeway title race because I think PSV under a new head coach will be up there again you'll have Feyenoord another year into the slot reign, another year of smart buys in the transfer window and and moulding a side that can challenge and then you have Ajax and We'll see what Ajax are like next season. If they have lost, say, Ravenberg, um, you know, teams are sniffing around Martinez and Alvarez. Mizrahi is going to be gone. Will Wrench be able to step up? Tagore Fico is going to be gone. When's a year older? You know, what Ajax is going to look like next season remains to be seen. So I think it's exciting. And for the Eredivisie, they're fine or they're strong because that's what you want. You want three teams at the top of the Eredivisie all fighting for the title. And I think this final side definitely have it. And who knows what it can do in the Conference League as well, getting Slavia Prague in the draw. Get past them. I think it's either Marseille or, or Pauk. Um, you know, I'd say Marseille have a, a clanger and Pauk go through the same final final against them in the same finals. I'd, I'd say final are the favourites for that. And then it's a final and who knows what could happen. Imagine, you know, it's... It's a long way away, but you know you could see it possible that it could be a PSV final final, and that would be incredible for Dutch football. Um, and you know I'm not ruling out final winning that trophy, 
right now. So it could still be a great season for them if they win that. I said this since the group stage is that I think final might do it, might do it. They, they've got the, the, the team to, to win these kind of high stakes games. They love games in DeKalb and having the fans back there for is, is brilliant for them. It's a competition they want to do well in now that they can't win the Eredivisie. So long as they can finish third, like they're, they're just concerned with Europe now. You can see that today that get, getting through that partisan tie was important and they didn't really have room to rest players because of injuries, COVID rather. So they played a really strong team and it impacts them in this game against Ajax today. And even that a game as big as that, they don't want to rest that many players. They want to get through in Europe. It's a it's a big deal for them to be going so far in Europe. I, I still think they can do do more, go further. And yeah, next season it could be brilliant. You you summarise it really well, Mike, but just to say again, I don't think they're gonna lose any players this summer. It could be Sanesi Sines- goes, but he could easily be persuaded to stay if finally they're gonna be ambitious in the transfer market and 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 say that they're gonna be tight challengers. That's what they want to be doing, and they need players to just Sanesi around. But the rest, possibly Sinistera, but I, I, I think he also loves being a final and he'll want to stay into the year, prove himself to, to be even better than, than scouts we think he is already and then get a big money move. So it's all looking very good for them. And I'd really like to see final China, a new striker in the summer, not Dessas, but somebody else who can offer a bit more. Dessas has got the goals, but he hasn't got the all-round play. You know what, like a Lintz and a Dessas put together. A Lintz and work hard and a Dess as he scores the goals. And then they'll be, I, th- I think, one of the favourites to win the league. And um, Well, they already are one of the favourites to win the league. So that's a bit of a throwaway statement. Possibly better than Ajax if Ajax is going to be losing players and Ten Hag. Then final stability could be what throws them to be, be the favourites next season. Finally, on Ajax, how far do you think they could fall this summer, Mike? Do you think that would even be allowed to happen with Van der Sar at the helm? Uh, that they could possibly as a manager, most of their back four, Kravenberg. Tadic will stay, but is a year older. Blint, also a year older. And Ale, what happens to him now that he's scored the goals in the Champions League? Might Ajax want to cash in on him um, so that they, they can, because I mean, Ajax fans don't like Ale sometimes. And whilst I think he's a good player, maybe Ajax thinking, well, if he's had this great season, let's cash in on him and then get somebody else. Do you think they're going to spend again? We're going to have to because mm. I see Gravenberg. They've got loads of youth players coming through, have they? They do and they don't because the youth players that are coming through, they're not really, even this week, the players yeah. that are playing well for the under 21s or under 23s, as they call it. You know, Nacho Univar, you know, Ten Hag literally just came out and went, he's not good enough um, at the moment for the first team. You got somebody like Ihatrin who Ten Hag said can't even run. <laughs> Yeah, so you're looking at him next season, probably starting. I know that everyone's saying that I had to penciled in the, the cup final against PSV to come back, but unless he has a big summer, comes back, and then he'll be like a new signing in there. But I think they are going to lose quite a few players. I think that, you know, the goalkeeping situation is one that you got question marks around. You know, Onana's gone in the summer. Then you got Stick Ellenberg, who is long term injured. How long have he got left? You know, past fear has been good and bad at times. Titans come in for a short term. And then, even though he was, he was great, we've not seen anything of, of Gorter yet. And he's been injured for a long term. So, do, do they need a new goalkeeper? Probably yes. Do they need new fullbacks? Yes. You know, Vindals has signed a new deal with, with AZ. So, that's added another 10 million euros on his asking price to. Ajax anyway so they're going to have to look at that maybe a new centre back in the midfield they're probably going to lose Gravenberg so do they promote Taylor finally do they finally give him his chance or does Ten Hag think he's not or whoever's the head coach at that point think he's not good enough so maybe a new midfielder and then what about Anthony the, the star of this Ajax side at times you know you've got big Club sniffing around Anthony, do I ask cash in? Then you got the players that they signed like Dorami. I mean, he was brought in as a successor to Neres and he's barely played. So, yeah, yeah. do I ask trust him or is he going to be another? I can't remember his name, the one that they signed and then he got shipped off to 
Switzerland, Bandy. Is he going to be another Bandy yeah. where he paid all the money from? He never saw him play, and then he got shipped out. And then up front, as you say, Haller, he's had a season of his life in the Champions League. Could they convince another club around Europe to pay around thirty million for him? And if they do, can you really turn that down? And then what happens with Brobby? Because he's going back to, to Leipzig in the summer. Did they stump up the cash to to bring him back? So I think, and then that's not even mentioned the fact that Ten Hag is possibly away as well, given the fact that Manchester United are looking for a new head coach. PSG will probably be looking for a new head coach, and Ten Hag's been linked to both. So do they keep him? And then all the uncertainty over what's happened with with Mark over Mars, which we shouldn't get into too much. But I mean, just Ajax behind the scenes aren't what it should be. And this summer it's going to be. If you're Edwin Van der Sar right now, you're you're thinking, God, this could all go wrong. Oh, it could all go horribly wrong in the summer if everyone just decides to to go. And if you say Tadic will stay, and Tadic has always said that Ajax is dream club, but when Barcelona came knocking, he wanted to go. So if everything starts to turn in the summer, does Tarich then decide, well, I've got a couple of clubs that want me that are big teams. Maybe I'll go as well, then push for a move. I mean, I think Ajax have youth players that are capable of stepping up. They have the money if they sell Gravenberg or a couple of players to bring in new recruits. But they need to sort themselves off the pitch. They need to make sure that if Ten Hag does go, they've got a great replacement in for them. And then they need to stop situations like Mizrawi and Gravenberg happening again because Gravenberg shouldn't be getting down to his last year of his contract. Mm. Mizrawi should not be leaving on a free transfer. I mean, that's just big errors from the club to not tie these players down and let them, let them walk away. Because if Gravenberg goes in the summer, because they need to sell him if he doesn't, Signing a deal, who's going to pay what Ajax think they should get from, which is 30 40 million? Nobody. Bayern Munich are looking to pay in something like 20 million from, which is probably not exactly what it could be worth. So we'll see what happens in the summer. Um, I think there'll be at least three or four players coming in, um, but who they are and what quality they have remains to be seen. The one that could be interesting is. I mean, I think Ajax fans would love it. And I think he would love it. You know, Luis Suarez isn't playing too much at Atletico Madrid. Could he be tempted to come back and play that striker role at Ajax? I think he could. So players like that would be what they're they're looking for. Um, and you got to say that, you know, Ajax made, made a living of sometimes poaching the best players from their Eredivisie clubs. But if you're looking around their Eredivisie right now, do you, is there anyone outside of... Vinda, he said that would improve Ajax right at the moment. You know, the young left back at Groningen is, is building himself a reputation. But other than that, I can't really say that Ajax are going to go around and, mm. and sign anyone there to visit quality. So they're going to have to look abroad and look at the markets that they, they have been using recently, which is South America or, or Mexico. So it's, it's a big job. So, you know, I wouldn't want to be Van der Sar right now if if it all goes wrong, but yeah, we'll see what the seasons will come out next year because all three big clubs going to next season going for the title, but I think PSV and Ajax are the ones that are going to have big changes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and you'll start to hear rumours probably popping out soon about things Ajax are going to do over the summer, but I don't think Ten Hag will want to stay end of the year if he has a season similar to this one where he might go and win the Liga then Cup or whatever. But let's say if he did choke on the league next season, let's say he did get knocked out of the group stages of the Champions League, that's going to really damage his reputation that now he has to go to get a good move. Or he's going to be stuck at a club like Ajax or, you know, whatever, like a subway step for the rest of his career. He's built a reputation where he can go and take on a, 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 a head coach of a big club. You can't waste that. So, yeah, I, I just feel like it's a big end of an era for this Ajax um, that we've we've grown to love. And I did say at the time we got to enjoy it while we can. I hope people did enjoy it because for Dutch football, that might be as good as it gets for a while a while longer. Unless Ajax go and surprise me and get a brilliant new manager. They sign some excellent new players and like, like a Suarez, for example, and they go fly Europe again. 
But I don't think it was as, as strong as this season. And I think that was a waste opportunity to not get past Benfica. I think this this team could even have got, got past Chelsea to go even further. But then I think, you know, against a Man City, I think they really would have met the match. Yeah, it's a shame. It's They've just had these internal problems. It seems to affect their form. That even in the league, they're struggling to beat the likes of AKC Valvike and Kamba. It's like, just a very bizarre, very bizarre that this is all just turned on its head. The team that could beat Kamba 9 0 early in the season has, has been given a really good game by Kamba. No, no disrespect to them. But it, this, the, the difference in quality has, has been immense. And they just sort of threw this goal lead, this two goal lead away. This I actually have not seen in a, a long time. And it didn't surprise me they got knocked up by Benfica. I had a feeling that they'd just chip away it and get a goal. And they have that experience, those experienced defenders, to see it out. But Ajax could, could have those the same defenders on, on the floor, on the ropes, with a scintillating performance that they, they know they're capable of by destroying Lisbon, just by destroying um, Dortmund. Wow. Where did that go against Benfica? So disappointing. And, and a final comment is, is, is from someone called Mai. I like Cumin, but felt it was getting a bit a little stale towards the end. Yes, back to what we're saying about the Netherlands. I, I see your point there. To be fair, that it, it did feel like he was trying the same old thing, which worked well at the beginning, but wasn't so much towards the end. But I know a lot of Netherlands fans, including you, might want to see Cumin back. That he would bring lots of brilliant qualities back to the side, and who knows, maybe he'll try some things a little different if he comes in again. Um, yeah. Anything from you, Mike? Before before we finish. I think that on that, you know, there's a lack of options. I mean, we've talked about it before that there isn't a lot of Dutch coaches out there that are setting the world alight. And mm-hmm. you go back to Ajax and you wonder when Ten Hag does go, who are they going to turn to? I think that... Imagine Arna Slot doing another betrayal. Go from oh. Marseille to final and then go to Ajax. But he's standing out as a brilliant coach at the minute. Yeah, he's the one that I think if Ajax were looking for a new head coach, they would turn to him and go, right, yeah. do you want to come? Yeah. And at least try to to get him. I mean, you know, somebody well, you like Ronald Kimmon. Yeah, so somebody like Ronald Kimmon has, has managed PSV, he's managed Feyenoord, he's managed Ajax, he's managed them all. You know, so I don't think he does have, you know, a club loyalty. To, to Feyenoord I'm not sure if he was a Feyenoord fan or anything like that but I think he was Swallow <laughs> yeah so if if Ajax came to him and a good enough offer would he go mm. my, my head says no at the moment mm-hmm. and the most likely scenario that I can see is Leon are not doing well in the league this season I think that Peter Bosch is going to get sacked before the end of the season does he then return Possibly. Possibly. I think that he might be the one that they turned to. He got them to the Europa League final. Mm. He was a gun hole attacking coach. I think he'd be quite popular if he came back. Um, but other than that, I, I can't see any options that are Dutch that really stand out as being, oh, he's the next Ajax coach. You know, it's not going well for Renner Hackett. Utrecht. Um I think Keith Van Vonderen is one that in the future could be one, but he's going to go to somebody below Ajax for next season. So maybe a Heron Bay and somebody like that. I was just checking so myself not- because I've just thought we're trying to have in the great season. What about their coach? And I remember that it's Ron Jans. Ron, Ron Jans has been yeah. Ajax manager though. <laughs> Crazier things have happened, but yeah. <laughs> you've got next season, you've got. PSV and Ajax potentially looking for new head coaches. PSV possibly going back to to Philip Koku. You know, Marcel Brands is back. Does he bring back Koku as well? Then they go they go again. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll see because it's just one thing that is standing out is the fact that Dutch coaches right now aren't doing very well around Europe. Um <laughs> And there seems to be not very many coming through at the moment. The only one that is doing great is is Van Bronckhorst, which you know yeah. back at Rangers yeah. is doing doing great things there, and they they could possibly win the the Europa League if he keeps them playing like they were. 
so far, but yeah, you're just waiting for the influx and new ideas from from the Netherlands. And right now it doesn't seem to be to be happening. And unless I actually decide to turn to back to one of their, their ex players and, and go down that route. Amazing. Um then it's it's a struggle to see who they would go for. It's not somebody like Peter Bosch if he becomes available. Well, Mike, thank you for your thoughts. And obviously, we've got many more things to discuss again in future on Future Football Only podcast, whether that's the Netherlands or the Eredivisie. So um, thanks, everyone, for watching or listening. Give us a like on YouTube, SoundCloud or iTunes and, and share this podcast around if there's any people that you think might enjoy a bit of Dutch football chat. And uh, I asked you earlier to comment below who you would like to start against Denmark. Let us know your, your comments below who you would like to see play. What formation would you play? What tactics? Um, and we'll reply to you in the comments. Get those in. And of course, we'll do a live stream after the Denmark game um, to give our thoughts on, on the match. So for everyone watching, listening, bye for now and more from us soon.